What does it mean to have a spiritual conversation with someone? Well, let's first clarify what it is not. It is not a debate. It is not a deep gene theological discussion. It is not about philosophy of life. And it is certainly not viewing others as projects or targets that we need to help fix. Then what is it then? It's having conversations clothed in love and humility to discover the person's story while paying attention to what the Holy Spirit is wanting to say and do to bring that person one step closer to God. We often keep our conversations with our non-Christian friends and sometimes even our Christian friends at a superficial level. We talk about our families, our jobs, our hobbies. Now, nothing wrong with that. But when the opportunity arises, when the Holy Spirit prompts, we sometimes shy away from bringing that conversation into a deeper level. Maybe a common reason why Christians don't shift that conversation to talk about spiritual things like about God and faith is that we don't want to offend the other person or maybe we just don't know how. Asians are private people. We wouldn't want to just walk up to any strangers and strike up a conversation. It definitely is important that we are mindful of not offending others. We live in a multi-ethnic and multi-religious country. Our friends may hold on or believe in another religion and we should respect that as well. We should never mock, jeer or insult others because of what they believe. So then how do we go about having spiritual conversations? The first step to having spiritual conversations with someone is to develop friendships with that person. And developing friendships would mean intentionally relating with people. Intentionally build friendships with the people around you. Mm, so maybe like your neighbours, your colleagues, school friends or gym buddies? Yes, that's right. And Jesus has placed you exactly where he wants you to be. He wants us to be friends with the people that he has placed us with just as he is a friend to us. Focus on building rapport and goodwill. Be genuine, be authentic, be honest, be yourself. We are not perfect. Why should we expect others to be just so that we can start a friendship with them? We can start being friends with them just as they are. And don't start a friendship or conversation with the goal of converting that person. No, anyone can sniff out insincerity. They can sniff out an ulterior motive in a heartbeat and you would have lost their trust. And there is a saying which is very true. People won't care for how much you know until they know how much you care. Most of all, allow yourself to be guided by the Holy Spirit's prompting towards people. Don't miss that chance when the Spirit is nudging you gently towards someone. It's never a coincidence. It's a divine appointment. Even if it's a nudge to just say hi or to wish a good morning or have a nice day, go do it. Then see where that takes the conversation. It's an opportunity for you to see the hand of God and to see how He works His love for people through you. The next aspect of spiritual conversations is to discover stories. If the person is new to you, start getting to know the person Look for common grounds that you have with them. For example, do you have common experiences at work with them or school or common interests or hobbies? So people usually tend to light up when you mention something that they love doing or being around. Listen for them in your conversations. Ask about these things at appropriate times if you have to. As a friendship develops, listen. Listen for the stories of their lives. How did they come to be in the situation that they are in now? How did they come to love what they love? Why are they sad or why are they happy today? Who do they always talk about? Why are these people so significant to them? So in a real conversation with people, they will tend to ask you questions also. And when they do, share with them honestly, answer authentically. But always return the focus back on them. You can use the questions that they asked you and you can ask them the same questions. Because th their questions may give you a clue to what they're looking for in life. 
So it is helpful to ask them their own questions and then see where that conversation leads. There may come a point in the conversation where it goes past the superficial level. It could be a look, an expression, the body language, an emotion, a sentence that seems more than just what is said. Be constantly tuned in with the Holy Spirit and allow Him to guide you on what to do and say for the next steps to go to a deeper conversation. Be sensitive to the situation and their story. How you react can close the door to the conversation or open doors for meaningful conversation. Listen, it's about their story. Don't go on about yours. Accept them as who they are with compassion and grace because God is compassionate and gracious to you. And if you do find that they are willing to continue to open up to you about their story, ask questions and really listen. This helps us to understand how they see the world and life. Questions like, what do you believe? What do you believe about human nature, about afterlife, about purpose, what do you believe about suffering? Why do you believe those things? Listen to understand how they came to those conclusions. Who has most influenced you spiritually? People, books, experiences, or another way to put it, tell me what's your favorite religious experience? What's your understanding of the Christian God? What are the biggest questions you would ask this God if He existed? Listen. Listen with the intention to understand, not to refute, not to correct or not to oppose positions. Now, if they do ask for your opinion to these questions, then of course share honestly and gen genuinely, but don't give textbook answers. Share your answers from your life experiences and your personal encounters with God. After you heard their story, then discern the next steps to take. Think of yourself as a resource provider. Now, resource providers are servant-minded people. They are people who make a habit of uncovering the needs around them and then meeting those needs as naturally and as effectively as possible. It's not calling us to be a one-time resource of, oh, here's a good book to read or I'll pray for you and then we just leave them for the rest of the time. Instead, let us be a resource provider who is with them. As you listen to their story, you'll be able to discern their needs. Then seek to meet that need. It could be to extend a listening ear, giving a word of encouragement. It could be to provide practical help. For example, assisting a single parent who is a neighbour to send her child to school together with yours. As you listen to their stories, whatever that need is, based on what you have heard. Then discern how the Spirit is leading you to take the next step. At some point, it may even require you to take the risk of asking if they would mind if you prayed for them. It could also be inviting them to a Sunday service that touches on a topic uh, that is close to their hearts, based on what they have shared with you about or perhaps inviting them to celebrate Christmas or Easter with you and your family. Sometimes, the next step could also be nothing more than what you have already done. The point is this, it's not to have to conjure up something to do, but to be tuned in to the Spirit's leading on what you should or should not do at that point in time for that person. Develop friendships, discover stories, discern the next steps. You don't have to put the pressure on yourself to lead that person to pray the sinner's prayer immediately, otherwise you think you didn't do a good job. It's not a job. God leads each one of us to play a different role in different people's lives in their journey towards knowing Him. You are simply having conversations clothed in love and humility to extend friendship so as to bring that person one step closer to God. Is it risky? Well, think of it instead as exciting. Exciting to live a spirit-led and spirit-empowered life 
as a Christ follower. You started recording, eh? I, I think I pressed already. <laughs> <laughs> okay.